side. That oh, sorry, that match side, doesn't close. count. That match <laughs> does not count. That, I hate all these <laughs> analysts and casters and <laughs> that are watching this match, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it would have been different if Sai was on the edge." Did you f watch the game? There's a lot of like volatility going on, uh, it, clearly, uh, based on this week's results in the, in that particular group or both groups actually. Mm -hmm. So, can you tell us, MC, like? where you sort of feel like the, the slump sort of originates from uh you know in a, um, in a high level sense i guess it, it's it's weird because i think a lot of it goes back to the optic game that like if we didn't choke map three you potentially see a entirely different iceland result for us yeah. um that you know we would have been in a better spot uh the paper x game we were it felt like we were playing not to lose i like chalk that one up to a lot of inexperience and then just playing like a phase on crack basically because like <laughs> We don't we don't get that play style as much here in uh, North America anymore, except for like a couple teams, and the teams that run it aren't as individually talented as what Paper X is. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at that game, Jing just absolutely killed us. I mean he he was he four K'd I think three of the four pistols, and was just mm -hmm. on fire the entire match. So it's like they they just absolutely murdered us on on the maps or whatever. So like coming in, uh, we had the new meta. We talked about it and tried to decide like what we thought would be best going forwards. And we kind of got baited a little bit by practice results in terms of what was happening. But even during the group draw, and Kaplan can back me up on this, like there are certain teams I didn't want in our group, and I was like, I don't care what team we get as long as like I don't want hundred thieves and I don't want ghosts. Those were like <laughs> the two teams in our group. I was like, I don't want either of those because I have a lot of respect for Mike's HD and just the players they picked up. I felt like they upgraded well. Yeah. And I think NA in general, even before Iceland happened, all the upgrades that were happening were the right pieces for the right teams for the meta and everything. And we've talked about it a couple times that we're like, NA just literally got better overnight because the right people got on the right rosters. And theoretically, if they could play well together, it would work. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. you're seeing that now. And this meta is a bit uh, more like equal. There's a lot less thinking, I think, that happens where mm -hmm. it's like, Astra, you kind of had to, you had to know the timings, you had to exploit the timings, you had to like not get caught by stuff like that to be successful. Where now it's like, you can literally just pick A, B, A, B and like win the game on yeah. uh, a lot of these games. So it's very frustrating. But also we don't have a like top class raise player. Uh, I think we're one of the only top teams that doesn't have one. Size raise is good, but it's not as good as his jet. Where I think he has a world class jet. Yeah, we definitely uh, saw that. Is that Sentinel's yeah. issue as well? Do you feel? I well, I don't know uh, because I don't know. Like I still think Tins is comfortable and pretty good on raise, despite all the flack that he gets. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's like, do they want to play it? Like we don't see them run the fade, and I think the meta where it's working now is if you have a strong raise, you get to play fade and there's a lot of combinations and stuff you can do with that or KO or any damage source for the, you know, the suck that like fade ha kind of uh, has. Yeah. So, and since we don't run the fade or the raise, like fade for us is a little bit more rough to run on maps and things like that. Uh, so we didn't get, you know, that much time to try it out. And we went a different way in comps that we thought would work. And like I said, got baited a little bit by practice results. And then, you know, at the end of it, we were just like, we need size help to get into sites to, you know, because like sometimes we have people that bait a little bit on the team that it's like Saya making that space for us makes our lives a lot easier. So no matter what he's playing, we need him on an entry agent. Mm -hmm. um, you guys had some role swaps? Is yes. that correct? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. And obviously you kind of reverted them, right? Yeah, um, Jonah used to play duelists on teams before and did okay. And uh, I wanted to see like if we could have Rays out of him where we could put Sai on the op because Sai's op is outrageous. Awesome. Yeah. Some of the stuff that like him on chamber, he is a top level chamber when the game comes to him. Mm -hmm. uh, like his opping ability on that agent, it's crazy to watch because it's like... Uh, Net on chamber is more of a safe plane chamber where it's like he's either going to get one or he's going to get out. He very rarely risks the TP uh, like some of the other chambers that it's like they'll kill one and kill a second and then maybe they'll TP. Net is like if he's in any trouble at all, he TPs, which is like how we wanted him to play chamber originally. So like putting Sai on chamber where like he's going to draw out the TP the longest possible. Like he's literally out in the open half the time reloading his op looking at like the area he just opt and he knows the timing so well that like if the person swings in that timing he's going to hit his tp 
-hmm. So like he doesn't lose lines as much. We keep more map control with a chamber like that and Josiah being you know better on the op than what uh Mike was. It worked well for us in theory. Mm -hmm. Um and then you know we we decided to switch a couple things we weren't comfortable with one of the comps so we we tried mike on breach uh net and net is a really good breach um he he likes to play it in rank then at one point he was like yeah you know if you want me to play breach i'm confident playing breach <laughs> and i think net's breach is really really good and so we tried that for a little bit and again we had Sia on chamber and Jonah on jet because we were stealing a comp that beat us in europe mm -hmm. uh that like we wanted to play a certain way and we played like that and it you know it showed in the the ghost match we were very like prepared on a set mm -hmm. so we wanted to normalize roles so we tried to move people into playing as little agents as possible yeah. where net was just breach on every map Sia was chamber on every map and then Jonah filled our duelist role uh That's and good. things yeah. like that but we had issues getting into sight. Jonah wasn't as decisive as what Saya is or as crazy sometimes that it's like, sometimes you just need your duels to like send it and there's no mm -hmm. hesitation. And we yeah. were kind of lacking that uh, from time to time. So that's Too why- Too much self-preservation instincts. Yeah. Ultimately, we went back to the other comps and uh, mm -hmm. like switched some other stuff back to original things and mixed it yeah. with current meta. Even, even that actually going into it because uh, I think you nailed it. Sai likes it when the game comes to him, so now that he gets to play a jet, he gets to bring the action to those sites when he's opening. And I did notice that when Jonah P was like trying to dash into sites on Haven against the guard, he was stopped very easily by what the, uh, what the guard had. That, oh, sorry, that guard, match sorry, doesn't ghost. count. That match does <laughs> not count. That, I hate all these fucking analysts and casters and shit that are watching this match, and they're like, oh yeah, it would have been different if Sai was on the edge. Did you fucking watch the game? Like, oh my god, like, <laughs> they played a super heavy defensive side. That's of what Kong. I'm saying. That's what I'm we saying. We went into it, and it's like, yeah, we could have sent Saya in to die instead of Jonah. Like, holy fuck, that was not Jonah's fault. Like, uh -huh, we loaded uh -huh. into that match, saw that comp, and we're like, holy fuck, this half's going to be rough. <laughs> that was like, because you see the champions, and I was like, if they can play this even half as good as I think they're going to be able to, retakes are going to be like impossible to hold mm -hmm. like and you know live adaptation we've never played a comp like that our yeah. haven looked good that week and we come into that and it's just drastically different how you have to play it mm -hmm. i still think if we win pistol our defense we run it back and i know that sounds crazy but like i've seen it we averaged 10 rounds against fades on our defensive side and mm -hmm. we played ghost again and you know ran it up on the defensive side against them so <laughs> like <laughs> I know it could have happened. And then we, we choke pistol, like a proto hits a really good shot. Our cons are cluttered and like, we just, you know, we lose. Yeah. yeah but I'm so sick of people being like, oh yeah, this is like, they couldn't get the injury space. It's like, we were in sites all the time. Like the problem was not getting into the site half the time. The problem was like, what the fuck happened after we had this site? Yeah. 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 So, I've actually seen that a lot. Just real. <laughs> I, obviously I'm casting a lot, listen to a lot of analyst desks, watch a lot as well. And, um, the amount of times, if you just simply, it's not even scoreboard analysis. Because if you look at the scoreboard, you'll see that they planted. Or if you look at, just quickly flick through the <laughs> rounds, they'll be like, the team's got opening duels, and then people are lazy, and they're just like, oh yeah, they just couldn't get in there. And it's like, well, you look at the stats, <laughs> they fucking could. <laughs> they they got in there nine times out of, out of 12, but uh, mm -hmm. they couldn't hold yeah. on to it, was the problem. Yeah, so I, just... I think it's quite funny hearing you say that, because it's been, I know myself and Tom watch a lot of the games together, and we're just sat there like, what the fuck are you saying? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> like, I I like it. You know, they do a good job most of the time. But like yeah, that match in particular, little, everyone yeah. was like, "Oh, if Sai was on duelist, this would have been different." It's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that could be true. We might have won uh, you know, yeah. two rounds or three rounds. But like, Ghost played the Armageddon comp. That's like, what I... we they literally played the Armageddon comp. And like, if we got <laughs> to defense side with more than one round, we would have won that game. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I was getting into like the more the way that they plan into that, right? So when it's a triggered by an alarm bot by the fucking chamber, then you have the stars coming down, then you have the fucking fate snatch coming in, and all of that. Even if Jonah is able to get to his site, everybody else cannot get in because it's split off. Is is what yeah. I'm getting to. Like that that was getting shut down a lot. But I think also what I wanted to get to was all of that uh, went also into you guys switching back to a killjoy as well when you put Saya player back onto a jet. So talk, talk me through a little bit about that, that thought process of not putting net back onto the chamber as well. Um, I feel like I shouldn't talk about it, but, uh, basically, <laughs> you don't have to. 
Yeah, uh, basically yeah. it comes down to information. Um, mm -hmm. I think all these teams with Chamber have giant holes in their defenses, so they're gambling way too hard on different things. And we're a team that plays well off information. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can do our setups, you know, the, the turret and the alarm bot makes it to where uh, on, you know, maps, we can have control over three areas instead of one with the Chamber. Mm -hmm. And the Chamber, we don't know if the Chamber is literally right behind the trip, just like waiting for one of us to mess up and like come into the open. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's, you know, the, the turret is worth its weight in gold, ignoring everything else in the kit because the turret can hold down, you know, two or three angles at once. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they've pushed into an area like that's a huge amount of information and, you know, versus the chamber alarm bot trip, even if there's not somebody behind you or anything like that, you're constantly worried that somebody is behind you mm -hmm. yeah. because you assume the other team knows what you know, they're going to do the the correct play, whatever. And it's like, oh shit, garage is open. Mm -hmm. So like, instead of playing a setup how we normally would play it, or even pre-chamber, we would play it. We decided to go back to where we can control multiple lanes of information. And that way we can rotate and be more in the right spots at the right time. So let's talk a little bit about Icebox, obviously pretty competitive, uh, a pretty solid first half, I think, on Haven for you kind of paves the way, right, given those those eight rounds, which is a stark contrast to that uh, Ghost matchup, to be fair. Uh, heading over to Icebox, feels like, almost feels like a bit of back to basics. You've got the Sage Killjoy set up here, you know, going up against like the the Omen Chamber look from, from TSM. Uh, tell us a bit about how this went for you guys. Um, we were just supremely confident on this map. Like I said, we, we played some teams, uh, on this and did, you know, exceptionally well. And again, it comes down to information, mm -hmm. you know, with chamber, you're either tripping kitchen every round. Well, it's like, well, they can lurk under tube. They can lurk up, you know, mid to a, they can shock that. And we have no information anyways. So like, we always had to dedicate a person to middle and it's like, now with this, we don't have to do that. We have multiple lanes of information, which allows us to be in the, you know, on the right sites or whatever more often than not. And it shuts down lurks a lot of the time that it's like, we don't have to worry about that late mid to a lurk that is so common because we still have a turret up. We have alarm bot up. We have somebody looking at it. We have like all these different things and it helps us move more around the map and be in the right spots. That's, you know, the whole purpose of going back yeah. to the, the kill joint. Mm -hmm. Playing off information, which you guys yep. uh, we excel at. to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you go, Vance. I was going to move on. No, I was just going to add one more, uh, a, a, another question to like, how do you reply to like the arm armchair analysts, analysts like myself sometimes, where you know everybody went back to the basics. Trent went back to a Silva. He's fucking kicking ass as a Silva, as we saw some a great clutch round on on the Haven as well. What was that? What does that say about the guard in terms of the following weeks or? the comparison of you guys versus uh, the current meta. Are we going to see some switches into the next few weeks? Are you guys trying I think, something different? I think the thing that people don't understand in terms of fans and analysts or casters or, you know, whatever, like mm -hmm. you don't see practice ever. Mm -hmm. You only see matches. We could right. play a neon comp uh, or, you know, these different meta comps or whatever, and they work for other teams and they understand how to play them. But we play them through a week of practice and we're just like, guys, I don't know if we can do this with this little time. Mm. Like, nobody understands the time crunch that, like, most of these teams are under. And with us being, you know, one of the newest or most new teams in the scene, like, we don't have stuff to fall back on. Mm. Valen had never played anything besides Astra up until, like, when the Astra changes came. Yeah. Like uh versus you have Marv, F and S, like Optic, for example. These guys have played through almost every meta every in meta. Valorant. Yeah, They've right, been right, right. through everything. Where it's like we didn't even have guys on teams. I mean, <laughs> when half these metas were a thing. So it's like we're still learning it. I was later in the game as well. I'm still learning some of these things. And like we try some of these things, but it's like it comes down to a comfort level. That it's mm. like, are you gonna play the neon comp where Saya is like I am comfortable with this, but I'm better on jet. Or are you just going to play the jet comp because you know you can win with it? So it's like moving forward when we have more time and things like that, uh, like if we have to play LCQ, things like that, you're going to see drastic comps out of us. I mean, even now, depending on maps, you're going to see drastic comp differences from us. Yeah. So it's like we just haven't seen those maps yet. Uh, you know, like if they pick certain maps, you're going to see like what we've been planning or things like that. But until those maps get picked, like... You know, let's just say we play Fracture every week for five weeks. And, like, 
we play bind fracture every week, five weeks. You're only going to see two comps out of potentially, you know, seven maps, seven comps. So, yeah. yeah, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in terms of teams that are trying these Yoru comps, trying these Neon comps, trying Fade, trying all these things, and you don't get to see that. And one of the things that sucked for us was we had a little bit of extra time because we didn't have to play the qualies, but every team in the qualies couldn't play Fade. So we couldn't practice fade against any of those teams the entire time leading up to group stage. Right. Because they wanted to play old patch to have their best chance at qualifying or whatever. So mm. there's a lot less time you have than what people think. Because it's like, again, you have seven maps. Yeah. If you're playing seven scrims a day, which there's not a... I don't think there's a team that does that because, like, that's a lot. We played six last week to try to get back and, like, we were dead mentally. Mm. So it's mm. like... That is one map per day That's on that map. Good. That is like in a week, if you play seven days a week, which no team does, uh, we do six, like you're getting, you know, what, seven reps on each map if you played, or six reps on each map if you played seven scrims a day. Most teams play <laughs> four or five. So like there's a lot less time in between to be able to change things. And I don't think people understand that because it's yeah. like, Oh, we need to work on this. It's like, well, you know the veto. Like, bullshit. Half these teams, we don't know the veto. They're they're <laughs> new rosters, they're new comps. We have no idea what they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. You have an idea, but you're still preparing for like five maps, sometimes six maps, depending on what happens. So of course. there's not as much time as what people think. So you're you're telling me that there's a possibility we're gonna see hopefully the guard on split or breeze. Uh, we <laughs> we yeah, well, yes. I I mean like we play all seven. Yeah. The thing is, it's like if we play a team that like their breeze is nuts, you look at Ghost. Ghost Breeze yeah. is one of their better maps. Like yeah. they just showed that against Exit, who Breeze is one of their best maps, in my opinion, or it used to be. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why would we give them their best map? Like we're comfortable on the other ones. Like we're good on Breeze, but it's like these guys have a lot of depth on Breeze. So like, why? Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, that's a that's yeah. a free segue for me. Thanks.